Welcome to Minding My Own Business 2020. These are a series of webinars brought to you by the Fremont Group. We do six per year, one every other month. This, the first one of 2020, is being offered free to everyone. You can find the branding ones on our Patreon site. I am Dirk Peters, the Executive Director of the Fremont Group. This series is based upon the book of the same name that I wrote, which is Minding My Own Business. The book is available on Amazon or on our website. The proceeds go to support the work of the nonprofit Fremont Group. The Fremont Group is a nonprofit organization supporting small business communities since 2001. PFG hosts a website at pfginfo.org, a Patreon site at www.patreon.com, the Fremont Group, and a Facebook page and a YouTube channel. Our services include management consulting, mentoring, coaching, which are all provided by our network of success partners, both on-site and remotely for follow-up. Our accounting division can also keep your books and provide reports remotely at a cost significantly less than you would be paying on your own. We also offer this webinar series and decades of experience in small business. We hope you'll take advantage of it. Each two months, PFG produces a webinar, six per year. They follow the six responsibilities of the small business owner as taught in the book, Minding My Own Business. They are available to our subscribers on our Patreon site. Please take some time and visit our Patreon site and see the many things there that are helpful to you in running your business. Following the webinar, you can join the, on the Patreon site for as little as $49 a month and become a patron of PFG. Support our mission of providing quality professional services to small business owners at rates that they can afford. Find there and on our website hundreds of informative posts that will make you more effective as an owner. And always feel free to contact the office regarding any issue that you may have or just to find out more about us. Our company motto, you only have what you give, is by giving of yourself that you grow rich. The webinar series and all the work that we do is designed for the owners of small businesses. You are the true hero of this story. You risked everything for a dream. You saw in owning your own business the opportunity for an income and a quality of life far beyond that of people working for wages. As time went by, you may have raised your sights even higher, or you may be frustrated in not accomplishing the goals that you had set. You're at a fork in the road. One way leads to the accomplishment of these dreams, the other to failure, and you have certainly tried and done all that you can do. To paraphrase Stephen Covey, no matter how hard you work, you won't find your destination without the right map. Through our webinars and the work of our success partners, you will see more clearly the rocks in the road and achieve a peace of mind that a properly developed map can provide. What are the six responsibilities of the small business owner? Number one, you must make a minimum mandatory percentage of profit. Number two, you must create cost controls designed to produce that minimum mandatory percentage of profit. Number three, you must create an organizational structure with incentives and accountability for the enforcement of the cost controls. Number four, you must sell internally and externally. Number five, once you make money, you must keep it. And lastly, you must have fun. This webinar addresses the first of those responsibilities, that you must make a minimum mandatory percentage of profit. This might seem obvious. However, we're going to examine this more closely. The wording is specific. What is your minimum mandatory percentage of profit that your business must be producing. In order to compute that minimum mandatory percentage of profit, number one, let's look at your expense, expenses. Excuse me. Uh, accountants can ruin a good business. Accountants take one of your most valuable assets, your people, and instead of calling them an asset, they call them an expense. They also organize your books for taxes, and he who runs their business for taxes won't pay any because they aren't going to make any money. 
For managerial accounting, you have to recast your financial statements. This is addressed in more length in the second webinar of this series regarding your budget, but we have to start to some degree now. Pull out your own profit and loss statement. You can actually pause this webinar until you get that. The first question that you must ask is, am I realistic in the projection of my expenses? If you're not paying yourself or paying yourself below what you would have to pay someone else to do your job, then you're not being realistic. If you don't include sufficient funds for the promotion of your business, advertising and so on, then you're not being realistic. If you own your own building, but don't include the market value of rent for your space, then you're not being realistic. There are a number of other examples. But so examine, are you really being realistic in your expenses? These are the recast expenses, not the ones you're going to turn in for your IRS or anything else. Okay. Um, what is it really is the real cost of running your business? Then create a budget for the next 12 weeks that includes those realistic expenses. Your budget should produce a profit, hopefully. If it's not, you've got some real problems. So what do we do with that profit? In your budget, after you've estimated the profit, there's four things that you do with it. You pay your taxes, you retain cash, you retire debt, and you purchase new assets. Let's start with this fact of life, and that's taxes. Make an estimate of, of what the amount of taxes you expect to have to pay in the coming year. Base this upon last year's taxes and advice from your CPA. Be sure to consider your anticipated growth for the coming year because your growth will result in more taxes. But get a realistic number on your piece of paper that represents the amount of taxes that you expect to have to pay this year. Cash retention is probably the most overlooked of the uses of profit. How much more effective could, would you be if you had another ten dollars or $20,000 or whatever on your balance sheet? How would that make your business different? Could you take advantage of discounts that are being left on the table? Would you have less stress? Would you be able to elevate your management by making decisions based upon profit rather than upon cash flow? Cash is on your balance sheet as an asset, just, and just like any other asset, you must purchase it. You must purchase cash through a plan of cash retention. If a business owner doesn't have a goal for cash retention and isn't planning and working towards it, they aren't going to achieve it. There's always another way you can spend your money other than retaining your cash. But think about how much more effective you could be if you had more cash in the bank. Determine the amount of additional cash that you want in the business in the next year and add that to your computation that you did before of the taxes. If you have long-term debt in your company, you need to allow for debt retirement. You pay down debt from profit. The interest on the debt is a line item on your P&L, but the principal is paid from profit. Debt is not necessarily a bad thing. However, the interest on that debt reduces your profit, and the principal payments require a larger profit than is required without it. So determine how much debt you wish to retire in this year. How much are you, or how much are you forced to pay by the bank in this coming year? Add that sum to the tax and the cash retention amounts that you've just computed. Every business also requires new asset purchases on a regular basis. It might be as small as a new printer, or it might be as large as a new building. What is your capital purchases plan? What will you need to have over the coming year to meet your growth that you're anticipating and the things that are going to wear out and so on and so forth? How much is that going to be? Lay out your plan for the required capital purchases and add that sum to the taxes, cash retention, and debt retirement. These are the things that you're going to do with your profit. You've now computed your minimum mandatory for profit. This is the amount of money that you must produce after your realistic expenses. It's basically a break even. Notice that two things are missing, the percentage and any disbursement to yourself. 
As you'll see in our next webinar, you are compensated for the risk that you have taken and all of the brain damage that you have put up with through the disbursement of profit. You're compensated for your job and your daily activities through your salary. If you only want a salary, then you don't own a business, you own a job. Think about that. Now do a little math. Take the amount of your four uses of profit and double it. Take the percentage of net profit from your budget that you laid out earlier, what percentage of profit you believe you're going to make, and divide your the dollar amount that you just computed by that percentage. That will tell you what your sales volume must be in order to produce that minimum mandatory percentage of profit. Your sales plan is then derived from this figure. That may seem complicated, and we do examine this significantly more at length in our future webinars, but basically what you're doing is you're taking that break-even amount. How much do we have to produce through your four uses of profit? And then we double it so that you are getting compensated properly. Your compensation has to come from the profit, not from your job. Then, if you figure your company should be making 10% according to your budget, divide that $10,000 by 10%, and you get $100,000. That's how much you have to produce to make your minimum mandatory profit. Let's work through an example, and I hope I haven't lost you. Let's say your taxes you estimate to be $10,000 this year. You want to retain $20,000 in cash. You want to retire $10,000 of debt. And you want to buy $25,000 of new asset purchases. That's a total of $65,000. We double that to $130,000. If you project your profit to be 8%, 130,000 divided by 0.08, is $1,625,000 in sales. Simple enough. Now you have a sales plan designed to win the game. There's nothing more absurd than putting together a sales plan that isn't going to win the game. And what is this going to do? It's going to cover all of our expenses, your uh, cost of goods sold and your overhead. It's going to cover your four uses of profit, uh, 10,000 with taxes for cash retention, uh, debt retirement, and the asset purchases. And it's going to pay you a bonus of $65,000 at the end of the year. Not too bad. This is also, of course, in addition to the salary that you would put in there for the functions that you're providing for the company, which is your job rather than your return on your risk and your time. Notice that the sales volume is a function of two variables, your projected profit percentage and your required some certain of profit. You can adjust your required sales by increasing your projected profit percentage, which is reducing your break even. So take a look and see, is it possible for you to reduce or increase your profit percentage and look at the the effect that that will have on your required sales. Or you can adjust your required sales by decreasing your required sum, but not by failing to double it because that's your money. That second part is your disbursement. I don't think your spouse would really like you to go along and say, okay, we're just not going to take any disbursement this year. Okay, uh, you know, we're just going to kind of break even and go on. That's why you work 80 hours a week, right? Right? Right. right. It can be possible to reduce your uh, required sales or to increase your profit by making some cuts. However, be careful about starving your business to death. There are certain amounts of overhead and certain amounts of investment that have to be made to really be able to accomplish an aggressive sales plan and the goals and dreams that you have. Work with one of our success partners. They can help you determine those numbers and your options. Together, you develop a budget for those next 12 months. In doing so, you're creating a basis for your sales plan, for your employee job descriptions, employee incentives, employee accountability, your communications plan, and the reporting that you really need to run your business. All of this is impossible until you have developed an effective percentage-based budget. If you're not comfortable with that, please contact us 
a sales or a success partner can um, work with you and get that established and put you on the right track. You started your business with goals. Goals of income and goals of quality of life. If you step back and evaluate where you are now against where you thought you would be now, maybe you would find yourself ahead and you're setting new goals. Or maybe you have failed to achieve your goals. Either way, the only way to change is by doing something different. The Fremont Group can develop with you a plan to achieve your goals and provide ongoing assistance to keep you on track. Working with the Fremont Group starts with an initial consultation. This usually takes two days and is done on your site. To keep things simple and to reduce stress, we work for a reasonable flat fee, which includes all travel expenses. No surprises. From the initial consultation, you receive a complete plan of attack and the ongoing support of your success partner. We don't just leave after the initial consultation. We lay out that plan, and then we have weekly phone calls, weekly assignments, and stay with it. And then if follow-up engagements are requested, they are done in stages that fit your budget. As a nonprofit organization, we don't have any significant overhead. Our overhead is paid for through the sales of our uh, Minding My Own Business and through our Patreon site. What you can do is take advantage of that and the lower fee that we have for our initial consultation and in our future engagement and help get yourself on track and get where you want to go. The Fremont Group literally gives you a guarantee. We guarantee that no client will ever receive benefits less than multiples of their investment in our professional services. Attain your goals and avoid failure. Call us today, 303-338-9300. We have a small office staff, so it wouldn't be impossible if I answered the phone directly. I'd like to hear from you. We can make a difference, and you deserve it. Thank you for your time, and we hope that you'll visit the Patreon site, become a patron, and watch our future webinars. Thank you.